in the last episode of Matrix Dungeon. Our heroes Winston Dicados and Eduardo have just vanquished the familiar of a powerful magic user, clearing a farm that was supposed to be inhabited by mere bandits. Their elven compatriot Alira beckons toward the cellar of a small farmhouse. The house itself seems clear, but the cellar's heavy locks belies an importance kept within. With the help of Alira's magic, they step into the cellar, and they're struck with a terrible sight. Pools of poison covering the ground. As our heroes investigate the green liquid, which one of them misidentifies... <laughs> oh, wow. Failure. <laughs> Winston's just like, this apple juice yeah. smells funny. <laughs> Mounds of flesh coalesce into grotesque monsters and attack. The fleshy threats are handily dealt with, and the duo sweep the area. They see an opportunity and decide to augment their weapons with elemental runes. The pair press onward. Heading towards the next room, they see a tangled mess of cursed spiderwebs blocking its entrance. Winston subtly deals with the situation, but catches the ire of a bone widow. Once again, the heroes deftly deal with the necromantic creature. On its corpse, Eduardo finds a healthy, decapitated head. He nibbles on this morsel and learns its previous owner's secrets. Eduardo feels the wealth and power of its previous owner. He also knows a great trust for an unknown person with a ring emblazoned with the sigil of the Silver Canary. Upon further investigation, the cellar seems to be a weapons forge, perhaps of dwarven origin, and it had been recently been upturned by the dark creatures. Reaching the end of the cellar, the pair see a crystal pillar which Winston recognises from his tutelage. It's a totem of sorts, able to teleport, transmute and other untoward things, and is also surrounded by death fog, a potent poison that will kill instantly. Eduardo, seemingly possessed and to the surprise of Winston, casually runs up to the crystal beacon and deactivates it. He promptly kills over and dies. Miraculously, he's revived, albeit with the feeling of a complete and all-consuming hunger. After coming to terms with his temporary death, the two happen across a desk containing three obviously poisoned beverages, which Winston remembers undead creatures consume, and a note, an agreement of safe passage for an individual accompanied by the Silver Canaries. Alira rejoins our companions and asks if the Crystal Beacon had been touched. Eduardo explains what had transpired, and Alira bathes him and the beacon in holy fire, both dispelling the death fog and ensuring that Eduardo had not become undead. She claims that these beacons are used by either the undead or the Zis, an evil, lizard-like race of people. The only non-undead or serpentine person she knows of that may be able to utilize this beacon is Kaveil, the powerful, slightly racist elven mage. Alira then asks for a private audience with Winston, and Eduardo respects her request and leaves them be. She questions Winston about his homeland and whether he's seen a mother tree before. Winston tries very, very hard to remember, and does recall seeing one. Illyra then urges us to find Cavale and bring him to this place immediately. The duo begin the trek back to town to inform their employee that the farm is now clear. Heading across the bridge though, an assertive voice demands back a certain crossbow. It's Olaf, the untrustworthy drunk whom our heroes withheld a dangerous weapon from. Our heroes deliberate, and Olaf sends forth a large spider to deal with them. Olaf then presents himself and demands the crossbow one last time. Our heroes could not let such a weapon be returned to one as questionable as Olaf. He leaves our heroes with no choice than to defend themselves. The powerful foe seems to have a major upper hand, that is until reinforcements arrive. Anne, who recruited us to clear the farm, and Liam, the leader of the local militia. With the cooperation of these allies, Olaf is finally slain. Eduardo sees a potentially incriminating circumstance and discreetly urges Winston to remove the offending item. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Liam already knows that they were in possession of this extremely deadly assassin's crossbow and asks for its return. Winston negotiates, albeit poorly, to sweeten the deal for themselves. A deal is nonetheless secured and our heroes are assured that the crossbow will be dealt with safely. Our extremely conscientious adventurers make sure that no loot is left behind to fend for itself. They then make their way back to town and sort through Olaf's cargo with Liam's blessings. They seem to contain armor and weapons for a warrior, an assassin and a mage, destined to be delivered to unknown people. This piques the interest of our adventurers. They make sure to make good use of the armor they found. A curious party investigates the investigation. Olena introduces herself to the duo and knows of Olaf and the trouble he brings. She asks if they have come across her ring which was found upon the body of a thief from earlier. The ring being returned, Olena happily gives a fair reward and is happy to help if need be. 
many mysteries still lay ahead, and our heroes tread onward toward the truth. And this is where our adventurers are. What happens next? Find out this week on Metrics Dungeon. <laughs>